Do you frequently find your TV being hijacked by the Rugrats in your house? Does the thought of gaming on a television make you cringe? Then this video may be for you. Remote Play, a feature offered by both Microsoft and Sony as an alternative to playing their consoles on a TV. It allows you to theoretically play any game you own or have access to on a phone, tablet, or a computer as long as you have a stable internet connection on that device. They both sound great on paper, but do they live up to what they are advertised to do? I'm going to go over both offerings and compare them to see if one is better than the other while determining if they are a viable option. The short of it is yes, they do the trick. Now let's go a little more in depth with this thing. First up is PS5 Remote Play. To get started, you're going to need to download the PlayStation Remote Play app from the iOS store. Then, sign in with your PSN credentials. Just make sure it's the same account you're using on your console. Next, make sure Remote Play is enabled on your console. Just go to your settings, then system, and just toggle the Remote Play switch. Your PS5 should pop up on your app and have the option to connect. Just tap the connect button and you should be all set. Just a side note, make sure your console is in rest mode and not completely shut off if you plan on using this randomly without turning it on manually. Remote play on PlayStation gives you two options for playing. One option is to play with a touch controller overlay on the screen which mimics the PlayStation DualSense controller layout. While functionally sound, implementation is a bit unintuitive as it's awkward to be using touch sticks while pressing on-screen shoulder buttons, especially if you're playing a shooter. It's good to have in a pinch when you don't have a controller handy though. The other option, and the one I prefer, is to connect your DualSense controller to your iPhone via Bluetooth. As long as you're running iOS 14.5 or later, you should have no problem connecting. To connect, all you need to do is press and hold the Create and PlayStation button together until the light bar starts to blink. Then go to your Bluetooth settings on your phone and connect to the controller. Now all you need is a good pair of headphones, or pods, and you can game to your heart's content. The experience for me was seamless, I didn't notice any input or audio lag, and the video feed was stable. Sony recommends you have an internet speed of at least 15 megabytes per second for a decent experience. My current speed is 200 megabytes per second. One thing to keep in mind is that you can't exit the screen once you're connected. If you do, then you are immediately disconnected and have to restart the process. So no checking how bad your crypto is doing while you game. Overall, I'm going to have to say this is a solid feature for the PS5. Now let's dive into Xbox Remote Play. To get started here, you need to download the Xbox app from the iOS store. Just like the PlayStation, you sign in with the same Xbox credentials you have signed in on the console. What you'll need to do to get your console ready for Remote Play is go to Settings, then to Devices and Connection. Then select Remote Features and make sure you have the Enable Remote Features box checked. 
and have your power mode set to instant on. Next, you'll want to pair an Xbox controller to your iPhone, as there is no option for you to use touch controls here. Pairing is fairly easy, like the PlayStation process. Just press and hold the pairing button on top of the controller till the light starts flashing, and then go to Bluetooth settings on your phone and connect to it from the devices list. As long as you're running iOS 10 or later, you should be okay. In order for the controller to be able to connect through Bluetooth, it's going to have to be a Model 1708 or newer. I think those were introduced with the Xbox One S maybe? Now to get started you need to go to the Xbox app and tap on the library icon. Then select your console and tap remote play on this device. Then you're ready to start gaming. Microsoft recommends you have at least 10 megabytes per second to have a smooth experience. Unfortunately, even at the speed that I have, I came across some lag in all areas, sound, input, and video every once in a while. Not game breaking, but enough to annoy. I will say that the overall connection is persistent though. I was able to exit the screen and return only to get a brief reconnecting message and then immediately get back to the action without having to restart the process. Next we have a bonus mention. If you're a Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, Microsoft offers the ability to use their cloud gaming service on your phone, tablet, or computer. It's a little different in that you're streaming games from the cloud rather than your game library. The selection includes most of the games available on Game Pass. Unlike the standard remote play for Xbox, this service offers the option to use either touch controls or a controller depending on the game you want to play. The process for this service is a little different to get started. You play through a web browser that you saved on your home screen instead of an app. I'll leave a link to that page in the description. Once you log in with your Xbox credentials, the game startup is almost instant and seamless. Microsoft recommends you have an internet speed of 10 megabytes per second for gaming on an iPhone and 20 megabytes per second if gaming on an iPad. So what's the verdict? Like I mentioned in the intro, this is a viable option for gaming. I mean, more options are always a good thing, right? But I wouldn't say these would ever be my go-to for gaming if I have the option to play on the TV. There was something just a little off about playing on my phone. The lag was more present on the Xbox side over the PlayStation, so I will have to say the PlayStation Remote Play is a little smoother for me. It was more evident when I tried playing some shooters. But it is cool that the Xbox Remote Play keeps a persistent connection even if you exit the screen. Xbox's option to use the cloud is also pretty handy if you don't want to go through the hassle of having the games installed on your console. I can't really say there is a clear winner here, they both have their pros and cons, so I'll just let you come to your own conclusion. I say just enjoy both if you can. Well that's going to wrap up another video for me. Again, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Now I'm going to get back to gaming on my phone while my son watches more Wiggles. Until the next video, later.